this summer has just been absolutely brutal. So I have been out of the shop for the last several months. This is my next project. I am pretty sure it is hot, hot garbage. It is a, a shrinker stretcher for 16 gauge metal. Deep throat model, naturally. So this came off of Amazon and it is literally the lowest rated shrinker stretcher on Amazon. Was actually price shopping for uh, a set of jaws. I was gonna try to build a building shrinker stretcher. It's basically just gonna copy the, the Eastwood machine and I don't know. I found this thing on there for the princely sum of $130 shipped. And uh, the reviews for it are absolutely horrible. It's advertised as a cast unit and it's very clearly not. It's all flame cut and welded together. And uh, in some of the uh, some of the pictures on Amazon, they, they cut this pattern out of the flat plate, uh, recessed it, and then tacked it back in place with like tack, tack welds like every half an inch. But like I said, I was actually going to, I was actually gonna build one myself. Um, and for $130 with both the shrinker and the stretcher dies, uh, I literally could not buy the material to make one of these cheaper. But yeah, by the time you buy the dies and the steel and all of this kind of stuff, you're easily, easily looking at $200 just for material um, with the, the way prices are right now. And um, and this is already assembled. It's already put together. We've got all the material. Um, if I've got to weld a bunch of shit onto this to, to make it work the way it's supposed to, so be it. Because like I said, I was planning it Planning to start from zero anyway. Wow, these are terrible. I don't know why I feel so surprised about that. They've got like horrible ridges and stuff in them. Uh, like I don't even know how you get that bad. Like did were these cut with a plasma cutter? Maybe not. Maybe it's like an oil oiling thing. But <laughs> I'm not giving them. <laughs> uh, I'm not giving them too much of a benefit of the doubt. Because, yeah, like I said, these are cheap import stuff. Um, never really expecting super high end with this stuff anyway. Kind of like buying stuff from Harbor Freight. You know, if you can get it cheap enough to save you the labor of starting from scratch and uh, spend a little bit of money on modifying stuff to make it work, kind of the way I, I look at it. I do appear to be missing a spring, and it probably fell underneath my table and is going to be gone forever in a pile of junk, assuming it didn't disappear before out of one of the holes in the box. Gonna have to find that or a new one. Yeah, I'm guessing it's probably down in the bottom of the FedEx truck somewhere. And of course these are for the shrinker dies, which are the primary part of this that I really need. Deal with those guys later. Um, let's see. Handle. Sink. Ooh, those match up nicely. Guess we're gonna have to, well, no, let's not do that yet. I wanna see what it does fresh out of the box. I noticed uh, there appears to be some variation in these. I've only actually seen one video on YouTube of these so far. Um, and I can't remember the, the name of the, the channel, but he's a bike guy, like a bicycle, uh, motorized bicycle guy. Um, and uh, he made a clamp that goes across here um, I would like to try to maintain the full, I mean, 
eight and a half inches is nice, but I mean, realistically, a guy like me only needs about four and a half. Now let's see, now I don't actually expect this to work right out the bat, not with the way those jaws look. Ooh, snappy, snappy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's not gonna do a damn thing. Well, that was a fail. <laughs> Yeah, all we're doing is flexing the whole unit. Yep. Let's see, it is doing absolutely nothing. I think if I could get a little bit more leverage, let's see if I just stuff a shim under there. Yeah, I think a large part of this is just doesn't have enough throw. It's bottoming out long before we're actually reaching any kind of squish factor. Even with that in place, you can see this is stretching. This is stretching here. I mean, it's trying to do something now at least. Can at least give it that much credit. But that's a bit of a joke at how little that actually is. Okay, this is just a piece of eighth inch scrap. Uh, so I would like to rule out a mechanical issue. Ugh. Ah, there we go. That felt like it actually moved. Not that I can tell. I'm gonna have to look at the video again, but I think I might have already bent the machine. <laughs> I do believe I already messed it up. Because now it's not even going down far enough to open the dies without anything in there. Yeah, I may end up having to put this into my uh, press to close it back up again. <laughs> so yeah, I think I bent it. And that would certainly uh, keep it from functioning. <laughs> really, just spit out at me, why don't you? This is the uh, keeper for the return spring. <laughs> and it was tacked in like three spots that had more porosity in them than actual filler material. Eh, well, I guess we get to fix that too. As good as we're gonna get for that. Okay. So let's stick a piece of something in there. Measures and thousandths. Okay, we are getting some movement. And it is actively bending as we're going. Yeah, we're getting about a thousandth out of it there. Let's see if we sneak another shim in here. One and a half. Goes back to zero. Half. Back to zero. Okay. What if we stick a piece of 16 gauge in there? Okay, there we go. Bunch of shims and a piece of 16 gauge in there now. Let's see what we get. Six. Does it go to zero? No, it does not. <laughs> okay, so we're bending somewhere in here as well. Okay, let's see. Now I've got a ton of crap wedged in there. Hey, that time we actually actuated the the dies. Or we cracked something. Nope, <laughs> we broke welds. <laughs> nope, we broke the frame. <laughs> I see that now. 
<laughs> That's actually what that popping was. <laughs> So we know it's flexing there. I guess what this does do is make it obvious that this needs to get stripped down and re-welded <laughs> definitely along these plates. That's that's embarrassing, Vivor. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Mmm. Yummy. But I do think this uh, upper mechanism needs to be modified a little bit as well. Because um, that's not... Oh, uh, we're not getting enough of a stroke. Uh, I, I don't think even with this in ideal conditions. Yeah, let's try it out. How bad can it be? Pretty freaking bad, as it turns out. <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I'm not worried about it. Um, I've got a bunch of uh, scrap laying around and I can just weld junk onto it until it stops flexing basically Let's see how bad these dies are Oh, yeah, they are pretty bad well, This one actually has a ridge ah, I can actually catch that with my nail it has two levers basically we'll get this apart we can look at the guts deform the hole or bend the pin is that why it's so angry did we bend the pin no I'm gonna go ahead and strip this down um, before I take it out and close this up I'm gonna close this back up to three eighths of an inch So I know I shouldn't be surprised, but I am surprised. Holy crap, that is bad. <laughs> All these tacks are broken. Look at that. What a lovely hole. This uh, this plate, you know how light that is? This is like two mil. So like 14 gauge, maybe 14 gauge. <laughs> I'll probably uh, I'll bend up a piece of uh, leaf spring to stick in here because I think our overall width is uh, uh, yeah two inches and I think I've got inch and three quarter uh, leaf spring and I can just bend a piece that sits in here and I'll have a nice uh, open corner to fill in with the welder. Uh, but before I do that, I want to go weld all of this stuff up. I'll weld these plates back in. I am pretty sure what they did is these were probably CNC cut and then inset to make it look like a cast piece, then welded and then filled in with whatever that filler was uh, to make it look like it was cast. Don't know what I'm going to do about this problem, or about the, not that, but about, uh, about this problem. I think these guys are probably our main problem right now. Um, the, the problem that we're having is that this guy is barely engaging here. It needs a little more like that. Uh, I might just cut a piece of leaf spring where I can weld it back here so we're not having uh, brittleness issues. That'll give us 3 8 extra length and height. I'm not going to do that now. I want to just modify one thing at a time on this. Uh, so for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this stuff back up then put it all back together and see if it uh, if it flexes again and if so how much and kind of uh, kind of go from there. I also imagine I probably need to clean up the back side here um, see how well or how poorly that is welded in as well.
All right, so most of this crappy welding has been redone now. Unfortunately, we warped the hell out of it. Um, and uh, the dies are like 3 16ths of an inch off from each other. There's a, a brace uh, welded in the top here. I'm not sure how well uh, that is welded in. So I may just cut this off right here, uh, slide the whole thing back, get these lined back up, and then weld it back into place. Not a huge deal, but that is disappointing that it, oh, it moved as much as it did. I'm trying to find a, a piece of thin scrap. These jaws have closed up so much now. Oh, I don't know what, if anything, will fit in between them. Because <laughs> it's so bad. I may just have to kind of force it open, see if it'll bend. I just don't want to be mashing those uh, jaw faces up against each other. Maybe I can get a pry bar in there, pry it open enough to slip a piece of 20 in. Just drive this in there, force it open. Not. Mm. Well, it definitely doesn't want to move now. It is still quite hot. Oh, there we go. At this point, I'm not even trying to make the tool do the thing. I just want to see how much it wants to stretch. Very little change, sadly. <clears throat> oh. Did stretch the hell out of this piece of 24. Okay, that's definitely moving now. And this is 18. Oh yeah. Okay, well it's at least doing what it's supposed to. Unfortunately, it is still out of whack. The material just physically doesn't fit between the jaws, but Oh, it is actually doing the thing now. So, uh, we got that going for us. I think I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow. I can cut this top, just zip it right off. Probably wanna cut a hole in the bottom plate. Oh, so I wanna make a foot actuated stand for this. And I think, oh, I'm gonna have that Wow, the actuator rod run through the body down through here. Uh, since it's hollow, I'll, might as well make use of that. Um, shouldn't take terribly long to just, like I said, zip this right across here. I don't think it's even welded very well in the center. Well, I'm probably just gonna weld it directly to the stand. So I'm pretty sure I've voided the warranty on this thing by now. All right, back again. I'm gonna cut this thing in half and weld it back together, hopefully with the jaws in the right place. We'll see if I'm capable of doing that, seeing as I butchered it in the first place. <laughs> what I'm hoping to do is actually bisect the plate underneath If you can't tell, I'm actually doing my weld prep while I'm cutting this.
Not too bad. I wanted to leave that bisected in there. Oh, so it uh, would act as a backer when I go to fill the weld back in. I need to cut probably like the back half of it off. Yeah, right up to that chip in the paint. Did all that dirt just come out of this? It's like legit dirt. I guess it did. I guess that says a lot about the kind of conditions this is built in. I think what I'll do, since that lines up now, I'll weld this back to front and that'll actually squeeze this down a little bit and when I pull this out it should close back up to 10 mil. All right, got it welded back up. Didn't turn out entirely terrible. Oh, jaws are lined up correctly. They're actually straight and got good fill, good penetration. So let's uh, put it back together. Actually, let's. I'm gonna let it sit and cool. I'm gonna go have myself some breakfast, and. Uh, uh, then we'll knock this spacer out and see how much it moves. All right, it is cooled off uh, enough to handle. Let's see what kind of gap we have here. Okay, so it is half an inch. I just wanted to verify. And let's knock this out and see how much it moves. We only closed up a sixteenth. Not even. A thirty-second. That's good. I'm happy with that. Oh, I was a little worried. Three-eighths was going to be too tight anyhow. Yeah, that looks like it might be usable. <laughs> Although we are back to the other problem of not having enough throw again. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and fix the return spring first. This at least is a easy fix. Okay, we've got it back together. It is, oh, it is functioning better uh, now than it was before we welded up welded it up for sure. It definitely needs a, uh, some kind of either a shim in the mechanism or the jaw needs to be shimmed up uh, or both because uh, we're still running out of travel uh, even with this uh, with a quarter inch shim in here. Um, I mean really you only need this to open up about an eighth of an inch uh, just enough to get your material in there which is like there and we've got all this extra space. So I really want the jaws more or less closed at this point in the stroke uh, or engaged by now. And it's not engaging until about there. So, and we still have a lot of flex in the frame. Not terribly surprising, um, but we're actually getting some work done before uh, before we bought them out. Uh, it is, even after repeated uh, playing around with it and uh, stretching on this, this piece here, uh, it is still returning back to its original dimension after every stroke. Uh, so we're not bending the frame anymore, which is a good thing. Since it's not bending the frame anymore and nothing is going into plastic deformation, um, I feel comfortable using it the way it is. I still don't like how much it flexes, um, but I think 
uh, I'm going to have to eventually accept some amount of flex. I just don't know how much that's actually going to be. But now that I've established that welding it back up, misaligning it, cutting it back apart, and <laughs> fixing that, oh, and it, it will function after it's been all welded up. So at least we know that. Um, there's some other mechanical adjustments that can be made, and I will do those. I think for right now, I'm going to focus on trying to get this on a stand. I'd like something with a foot pedal. So I got to work out how big that's going to have to be uh, and how much space I'm going to have to give myself to reasonably hold a, a panel while working the pedal and how much space I need between myself and the pedal and everything. I'm going to cut the handle short, fish the, the actuator rod down through the body. Since this thing's hollow anyway, I might as well uh, take advantage of that. Uh, there is enough space in there. There is enough space in there to get this 5 8 rod down through there. At least I think this is 5 8 That might be 3 quarter. I've got a piece of quarter by 1 and a quarter. Um, it'll be easier to fit sandwich all the stuff I need to uh, weld onto this. Because I'm not going to have space to fit wrenches and stuff in there afterward. Primary thing right now is get it on a stand so I don't need to uh, so free up the bench space. Go uh, scrounge around outside for some parts. I think I know what I want to use. I'm just not 100% sure if I have enough of it. I've got more of this uh, C channel that the top of my table is made out of. Um, and I think I have enough of that to build a, build a stand. So yeah, I'm going to go hunt down some material and uh, we'll be back. Alright, so this is the lever for the, uh, yeah. Just a big ugly hole. This one is not deep enough. Leaf spring stock. It's not gonna work in there. We just talked about this. Story of my life. Le 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 